Hey guys, Kevin Shaw here, Editor-in-Chief of Mopar Connection Magazine. We're here with Jim Hannon and we are working on his 67 Belvedere. We are getting this Belvedere ready to be a GTX clone. Not only have we done the five-speed Tremec swap from American Powertrain, which is a huge upgrade. Uh, yep. it, it's very easy to be spoiled with overdrive now. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah. how did I live without it? <laughs> exactly. And today, we're actually really excited is, as you can see in front of you, we've got a brand new fiberglass hood from US Body down in Florida. And we didn't know how nice of a unit it was gonna be until it showed up. The hood itself is really, really nice. There's just a lot that they poured into this hood to make sure that it's structurally sound. It is not a liftoff hood, which are typically lighter. Right. It does have the substructure, which means you can run a hood hinge on it and your hood latches. What you want to do though, is you're going to want to take the factory steel spring, replace it with something a little bit lighter gauge, just so it doesn't bow and bend and crack your, your hood. So we're going to go in, we're going to show you a lot of the details of this hood from US Body, and then we're going to go through the steps of integrating one of the RO super stock lightweight hood scoops. And it's a fiberglass scoop, it's not a steel scoop. And he also got the template that shows us everything we need to know when it comes to drilling it out and getting it set up right on the hood. We're trying to replicate a lot of the original factory look. So instead of glassing it in, we're gonna keep that separated uh, two piece look. And we're going to show you some of the steps. We're going to show you guys the measurements that we take so that if you have a 66 or 67 Belvedere or Coronet, you can replicate this same look. Hey guys, I just want to take a quick minute to let you know that we've got the Mopar Connection store up and running where you can find all sorts of t-shirts and hoodies in a ton of colors and different sizes. We've even got designs for some of our project cars like Zombie and the Brazen Charger. So make sure to check out the link in the video description below. Okay, so this is the template that you picked up a few years ago, and this was taken off of a real RO yes. car. Yeah, the scoop was molded from an actual RO car. Too. Okay. And it, you guys can see in the template here, this is an oval that you're gonna, you know, this is the factory style oval that you would see on a cross ram. We're not running that, so we're just gonna run a big, what would we measure, 16? Yes. Yeah, big standard 16 they'll be offset matched up with the with the carburetor but this template did come with the with the holes now my question is we might need to remeasure to make push sure that back against the might have to push it back a hair it's my probably why he says line up with rear edge of hood right line feeling. up with the rear edge so we're gonna we're gonna take our holding tape down uh we'll we'll split that we'll get my measuring tape out and we're going to realign this so that we are just just inside of each of these reliefs that are on the substructure and if that's the case and we're happy where our measurements are and we're equal then we'll do our first pilot hole does that sound good hmm? all right it's far out of whack and it's not quite ten and a half it's ten and ten and a eighth no, quarter. Ten and a quarter. All right. It's ten here. Is that what I just said? Well, it's ten and almost a quarter. Okay, okay. that's not too bad. All right. This one is so nice, and it is black on the inside too. Yeah, I got this one from Kramer. Those guys are really. Kramer good. did this one. Okay. Yeah, they're good guys. And it's all rounded in. It's all smooth in. They did a really nice job beveling all the gel coat. So this really came out nice. It's cool. I mean, it was worth the money. It wasn't cheap, but it was I'll cheap. tell you what. Let's show the, let's show the good people. You want to, you want to lay that down just to <laughs> show them what we're, what we're digging at here. I think I got this is the hood that we are looking to do. A lot of you guys will remember this hood from the Silver Bullet GTX. Yep. Socks and Martin, Socks and Martin had an RO23. They campaigned the crap out of that thing too. Yeah. It puts it right at the edge. A lot of the mistakes that a lot of the other people do with these, they don't put the scoop at the edge of the hood. Right. And it's supposed to be at the edge. All, all the originals you see, the, they're only 55 built, and it's probably just a 
but 20 or so, 25 of them, they're probably still in existence. Race cars, man, they were never meant to last. Yep. All right, so we had to scribe the front holes because those were the furthermost out and they were not part of the template. I never understood that, but I was like, okay, guys, whatever. Well, <laughs> once you once you got all of these, you know, you figure you've got 10 holes, you can put it all in there and scribe those on your own, I guess. All right, so let's drill these out. We got some, some tools. Yeah, and that. And I got a good couple step bits. Yeah, hey, it tells us at a quarter. Yeah, see? Second bump, you they, quit. They, they think for you. Yeah. It's very helpful. It's gonna be real here in a second. Okay, commit. We got the Christmas tree out. <laughs> yeah. When I'm itching later, remind me why. <laughs> Fiberglass! Hey, now here's the problem with the step bit. Oh, it didn't take the bottom. Uh, I think we're gonna have to go up from, the, from underneath. Okay. Clean it up. Or use one of my uh, Regular, regular bits. Didn't take nothing. Okay. Yeah, that's we're, that's it's, that's it. It's and we're, looking, we're looking straight down the spine. Yep. Yeah. Dude, you're gonna tell me we drilled the hole right the first time? I think the, the only difference between this and the steel hood is the steel hood has a little bit of a lip that runs across the very front. That allows for the front trim piece, but we're just gonna take some double-sided tape to another, another trim piece. And we'll just go over here to Jim's car. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's the, the underside. But we can just put a double side right here and run double side and then we'll drill and fasten the chrome that all, all this stuff transfers over this yeah. is i mean goes right on it's not going to be a problem at all that'll be nice we'll just get some uh lighter weight hood springs and cut about 50 pounds off your <laughs> I know. <laughs> off the front of your car that'll be great okay so one thing we discovered as we drilled our holes we got everything nice we're just going to open up a little bit of the fibers so they don't get caught but because we have structure here we had to run a pilot through and we're using another christmas tree step step bit to open that up and we're opening it up big so that we can put a socket in there to tighten it down Close. NASA engineers here. <laughs> Shit. Uh, it's gonna be close. <laughs> Ish. And then the screw falls out. <laughs> this is not a tutorial. No, it's not. It gets you kind of sort of maybe close. Hey, hey! It's you shut your pie hole, I'm doing bitching. <laughs> I'm just keeping tension on it. Yeah, you know, it ain't gotta be exact. Yeah, I'm making a cinnamon roll. All right, great. Yeah, yeah, that's how we're doing it. It's a coil. <laughs> oh, shit. And it gives us a little room to. Oh, see? Inside mine. That's. Yeah, yeah. cherry. That's great. What are you talking about? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. I mean, come on, precision. <coughs> right? <clears throat> or something like that. <laughs> I'd use it. All right, here we go. It's permanent now. Oh, look at there. Yeah, I did it. Yeah. 
Pop we're, we're committed now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go that way and then figure out where else we have to be. Cut to the inside, right? Outside, inside. Uh, whatever you want. I may split the, split the middle of it for now. Well, you got a hole. You can go on the outside or inside of the hole. The next step, of course, we have to figure out where exactly all the trim goes. So Jim went ahead, took all of the Plymouth lettering off and came up with a pretty ingenious idea of just laying masking tape all the way across and helping us find the holes. And what else does that do also with this? Kind of gonna give us a spot to locate the chrome better. Yep. On the other hood, because this is a thicker area. We're gonna have to mount it a little differently. Okay. But. So we've got our tape transferred over with all our holes. We have a uh, sacrifice piece. This is gonna be our mock-up. <laughs> and we are pretty stinking close yeah, to where we wanna be. I think it'll be fine. It'll okay. Be fine. Going down the road, nobody's gonna stop and measure me, right? Okay. Well. I dare them, they'll get run over. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not instilling me with a lot of confidence in your <laughs> level of perfectionism, Jim. Okay, so what am I doing now? Uh, we have got my buffing wheel on my bench grinder in possibly the stupidest position in all of my garage. It is super inconvenient. The right solution would be to take the bench grinder and to move it and uh, attach it somewhere else on a different bench. But uh, again, I'm gonna do the lazy answer. I'm gonna make that a future Kevin problem. Uh, but we're gonna end up taking this piece of hood trim that's been in Jim's garage for probably 20 years. Uh, we already knocked out some of the dents. There wasn't a lot, but we are gonna put this up on the buffer and we're gonna give it quite a few passes on the buffer to see if we can't bring out some luster. grit we're gonna just scuff up a little bit of the surface here Filler primer, we're just gonna dust it 
and do a little pa quick pass, block sand pass. It looks like it's going to be really straight anyway. Yeah, I, I really don't think we're going to have any low points. Of course, I did, I did pass over with the DA. Here. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll meet you in the middle. I get the hype. <laughs> Man, that's badass right there. All right, I'm getting the hype here. Dude, the fan on this is ridiculous. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to be thick, but this is, oh, it's a single pass. <laughs> we absolutely went way too thick <laughs> for our initial pass. <laughs> Good, golly, Miss Molly, look at that. Yeah, that's a... Uh... I don't know how much that one feels, but we'll see what that does. We did some sanding. We uh, started with 220 and then followed up with 320 wet, wet sanded these just to find some low spots, just to find any sort of blemishes. The only blemishes we found were, it's still wet, but we found them here in the lip. You'll see, you'll see these little divots. We need to get some filler putty. And uh, we got a little divot right there. And then we have just the tiniest, where'd it go? There it is, here it is, okay. We got this little little booger we need to get to. So we're gonna get some filler putty, just some glazing putty, and we'll touch up those little spots. And then we will uh, sand those down and then reshoot it and it'll be in primer for a little bit until we can paint it and we'll probably be painting it in a future episode. Because hot rotting is hot rotting. Mm -hmm. Our hood latch off the hood. No fitty. Yeah, the hardware that they gave us, US Body gave us that was on the hood. A um, little too big yep. for factory. So we're gonna have to open up the holes on this. Just a touch too, it almost goes. Yeah, we'll River just kiss close. it with the drill and then we'll be good. Yeah. All right, we'll put it on the vise. Tell you what, let's see if the camera will focus. Well, it's got a latch piece. That uh <coughs> murdered my drill bit. My 516's drill bit did not want to eat through that. <laughs> we had to use the step bit just to get through it. Crazy.
initial fitment things that we had to tweak on. We brought up the hinge just a hair, we maxed it out. We had to take out a lot of the bumpers, just the little triangulated old rubber bumpers. They were, they were putting too much tension on the hood. Right now we have just the slightest bit of resistance in the back. And what we're doing right now is that we are actually taking the hood hinges and we're prying them up just a little bit to bring them up. And that's equalizing our fender lines and it's taking some of the tension off. So that way we want the hood to be able to open and close and not have any sort of tension or binding. Binding is not good. Mm. And we want to get rid of all that. So we're gonna, I'm gonna hold up the hood. Jim's gonna lift up again on the hinge and see if we can't get a little bit of that final resistance off because we are contacting in the very back corners. That's when you feel it, they're really tight. What's not to like? Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> this is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, the RO Superstock hoods just are a totally different beast. It's not. It's like I was saying. It's not as obnoxious as like the the <laughs> 68 scoop I have on the Charger. That's a that's a mailbox. That's a shipping <laughs> crate. But this yeah. is long and it's, it follows the lines. Really does complement the car. So yeah, Chrysler knew what it was doing when it designed these guys. Oh yeah. Um, obviously, next steps with the hood. Uh, we have a little bit more alignment tweaking to do. Yep. That just comes with fiberglass hoods. They're never going to be perfect. Nope. Um, even the factory cars, steel cars, weren't perfect. Uh, well, I, I do think we want to maybe space out the hood latch a little bit better because we just shoved a bunch of washers in. Um, yeah. I'm going to try and bring the latch higher up in the car. Yeah, if we, we could do that. the holes and make it give it a little bit more. Right. It'll give us what we need there. And then I can always bring it back down if the steel hood goes back on. Perfect. And obviously, guys, we are going to paint it to match the red. We want to go back to uh, less of a drag racer look and more of kind of a sleek street car look. This is just going to be a really neat complement to it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But again, for a fiberglass hood, really got to give it up to the guys at U.S. Body out of Lakeland, Florida. Oh, yeah. uh, we'll put all the contact information here on screen as well as in the contact information below. If you guys want to get a hold of the U.S. body out of Lakeland, Florida, we're really impressed with the quality of it. And then the hood scoop, of course, Kramer from Kramer. Those guys put a really nice looking product out too. And the guys over there are really nice. They're yeah. So they're doing business with them. Very easy to work with, yeah. so that's even better. Yeah. Kramer were the ones who gave us the, the template, right? Yeah, that was all. I bought that with the hood scoop. Right. Yeah. So, not only did we get the scoop, but we got the template off of Kramer. Yep. And we'll put all their contact information so if you guys are interested in doing something similar or fully replicating this, you totally can. Um, yeah, I am very happy with this. I, it looks so good going down the street. Uh, <laughs> I have I to just, wait for the video. Yeah, <laughs> that, that looks 
that just came out really cool. So we're going to end this one here. Uh, something you guys can pretty much do if you dedicate a Saturday. You can pretty, pretty much knock it out on a Saturday. Oh, yeah. We space it out over a couple days just because of work schedules. But if you enjoyed this video, guys, please give it a like. Leave a comment. Maybe share it with your friends. Help us grow the channel. And if you want more awesome Mopar content, we're more than a YouTube channel. We are a digital magazine with no subscription fees. If you've got a Wi-Fi signal, whether a phone, a laptop, or a regular computer, you can go and read all the articles that we publish at www.moparconnectionmagazine.com. And there you can see all the new articles. We publish articles Monday through Friday, entirely subscription-free to you. We'll see you there.